Hey there guys, welcome back to another video here at Top Tier Garage. Today we finally got a nice enough day out where we can actually take this thing on its maiden voyage. The battery is all charged up and then we will be running it all the way till it completely dies and it will not turn on anymore. So I think it's going to be around 25, 30 miles. I will be pedaling along with it, but it's not going to be any crazy pace. I do have my Fitbit on so you can see like what my heart rate is to show that it's, I'm not really working super hard in order to be going as fast as I am. So outside right now, we, it's crazy windy. It's about 15 to 20 mile per hour wind and then with gusts up to 25. But so when you're on a bike, just pedaling, if you're going into the wind, that is absolutely the worst thing ever because you feel like you're pedaling so hard, but yet you're not going anywhere. But with an electric bike, you should be able to just coast along with the help of the front hub drive. All right, so you're gonna notice a little bit different because the audio is now coming through my GoPro here. So this will be your guys' view for the whole time. So now the miles per hour on the screen itself is not correct. I mean, it'll say 30 miles per hour for the most part, but honestly, the fastest we'll be going is gonna be like probably 15, 16 miles per hour. Then when you get those nice hills, we'll be going about 23 and all that good stuff. So let's get to it. So this is throttle alone. I mean, we're going pretty good. So right now we're going directly into the wind for the most part. And we're still averaging about 12, 12 miles per hour. So we tackled the first big hill for the most part and we're one mile in already. Four minutes, 30 seconds. So we're 20 minutes in right now, we're five miles and we are missing one of the six batteries on that, but so that should means we have six times more of the power, but I think that the wind's going to catch up to this thing and I don't think it's going to make it the whole 20 miles. This wind is absolutely brutal. So as you can see before, the battery did dip below half battery when it was really working super hard. But we are a whopping almost eight miles in, average speed of 14 and a half miles an hour, which isn't bad. So as you can see, when you're not working it too hard, the battery tends to go back up. But the motor itself, it's you can hold your hand on it, but it's like a it, it is a little warm, but nothing really too, wor too much to worry about. The cable is all here, super cold. The controller does throw off a little bit of heat and warms up this box, but like I said, nothing really crazy about it. So if you're gonna stop and see the sights a little bit, So 
super flooded right now. And then the entire way back, we should be basically with the wind to our back. So you're gonna see that average speed climb up. And I think that we're gonna actually tame down on the battery usage. And as you can see, when you saw, once this hits 30 miles an hour, that power bar will actually automatically taper itself back. So we gotta beat the rain. It is, it's currently 4.30ish. It's gonna be raining right around six o'clock. So we gotta make sure we get this battery killed by six. Get her going. I almost forgot to turn that bad boy on. So we're about nine miles in right now, a little under 40 minutes. You can see our average speed picked up by like 0.3 miles per hour in this last little bit. And you can see that the power, it's not even using the full power in the hub drive. So I have a feeling we're gonna really extend this range by and the average speed it's going to get bumped crazy up we'll adjust the wind to our back you can see the the storm rolling in Do a little, do a little another checkup on the bike. The hub drive is a little, getting a little warmer. Doesn't like those big hills and it's really not gonna like going back up this one again. Cable's good, everything's good, but so now we're 12 and a half miles in, average speed of 14.5. And if you watched my original video, I actually did not put the front disc brake on, so we're only, the only thing we're rocking here are two bald little scrub brakes here. <laughs> so that's why I had to put the legs down going up the hill. But... So now we did dr drop back or go back up to four bars of power. If you saw a little bit there before, we were dropping down to two. But I think we can get another 10 miles out of it, I think. But also the GoPro itself is going to die pretty quick here. So you guys are going to be able to enjoy the last little bit of the run here. And I'll basically fill you in on all the stats once we're all done. All right, so we're finally back after that long e-bike ride. And you're probably wondering, how long did that e-bike battery really go? Well, I'll pull it up next to here, but it went 23 miles. We had a moving time of 1 hour and 33 minutes. Our average speed actually did bump up to 14.8 with a max speed almost 23 miles an hour, which is pretty good. And we only had a max elevation of 870 feet and a total elevation gain of almost 600. Pretty much all the roads that I was riding was either extreme hills or it was pretty much just flat the entire time. So then next I will pull up my Fitbit information from that day. And as you can see, my average heart rate was 114 beats per minute, which is not that high. <laughs> I mean, most people, when they start to get into cardio and stuff, they get above 150, so. And my max was 147. You can see I tried a little harder towards the tail end of this e-bike ride. I think it's because the battery was dipping, so in order to keep up the speed, I had to keep pedaling more in order to keep with it. So overall, you can see basically my, my elevation here. It goes up and down. It shows you all the hills that I went down, all that other good stuff. The whole entire bike ride, I, don't, I burned 858 calories. So now you may think, oh, that's inflated numbers because of the e-bike. But my Fitbit doesn't know that I'm riding an electric bike. It has no idea what I'm riding. So this is going off a of straight what it thinks I'm doing and it actually registered it as an outdoor bike ride. So 
the the Fitbit does not know that I have an electric bike. It just thinks I was pedaling, and this is what it registered, about 8.8 .8 calories a minute. So I, it's pretty nice. Now, granted, if I would have actually biked that 23 miles, it would have been a completely different story. This would have been sky high. My guess it probably would have been like double, if not even triple. And I'm guaranteed not to be going an average of 14.8 miles an hour. Guaranteed. So all in all, if we if we break that down, so when I plug the e-bike battery in, I actually have, it's called a kilowatt meter. It actually tells you how much power that it used. So I used that, I plugged it in, and I wanted to see how much it that charging that battery from empty to from what it cut off all the way to full exactly would be. So I'll bring it up on the screen. It took six hours to charge that battery and it only used 0.42 kilowatts. So now the going rate by us here is about 10 cents a kilowatt hour. So you times that 0.42 times 0.1 for 10 cents. It cost me 4.2 cents in order to charge this e-bike battery to go 23 miles, which is absolutely insane. And then if you divide that by 23 miles, <laughs> in order to go one mile on this e-bike, it costs 0.0018 cents. Crazy. Absolutely insane. So each and every mile you pedal is one hundredth of a penny. So when people say, oh, you're not saving that much by doing e-bike, yeah, you are, because it's basically free. Like I said, it only cost me four cents to go 23 miles, which is absolutely crazy. So now I'm curious, I got some more batteries in the mail. So I'm curious to see what kind of e-bike we can build. I think we're gonna put on a super long range e-bike that has a range of over 100 miles. So if you guys wanna stay tuned, just stick around. Thanks for watching, Top Tier Garage.